So Spanish lavender, lavender is slightly uh, important crop for California. It is the number one flowering perennial sold in California. Um, early season color is where lavenders stand out. They do great in our Mediterranean climate. They're drought tolerant. The bees love them. Butterflies love them. Uh, so as you can see, there's been a lot of breeding development in this type of lavender. Um, we did a Spanish lavender trial approximately three years ago, um, and it showed really well, but we've had some important new varieties come to market since then, one of them being uh, lavender anuk. Uh, anuk is a, a northern European bred variety, and it is very nice habit, well branched, but its most important uh, attribute is for the grower, and that's its disease performance. A nook can be grown outside here in California with our cool wet winters and we need very little uh, chemical treatment for sprays for botrytis and pseudomonas. Um, so for growers that's a huge benefit. Uh, there might be some lavenders here that are more attractive to the eye, uh, but from disease resistance, uh, a nook has really made a lot of strides with growers just from uh, its growing performance. This year is brand new is the silver anuk. This is something we've never seen before, that really bright silver foliage combined with the traditional anuk flower. Uh, excellent habit, really well matched. That's what I like to call a series. Um, and hopefully they can get some pinks and maybe some blues into that range as well. Uh, the Bellas are a, a, an Australian bred series. Uh, Bellas are, are known for their really tight, really nicely branched habit. Uh, Bellas typically have a shorter peduncle, so they're, they're ideal for you know, higher density production, four inch pots, gallon pots, they work really well. Or something like a nook that's a little bigger, especially later season, might be more appropriate in a gallon, eight inch, or two gallon program. Uh, patio containers are becoming very popular, and that's where some of these medium sized varieties would work nicely. Uh, we also evaluated some of the lo lower cost options. Here we have Castellano from Syngenta. This is a Spanish lavender from seed. You see a lot of English la lavenders <clears throat> grown from seed, but rarely do you see Spanish varieties and good Spanish varieties. Castellano is making progress. I still don't think it's as nice as some of the, even the unprotected vegetative varieties like Autoquast, but uh, if, if cost is, is paramount, it's, it's a good option to consider. Um, jumping down to uh, one of the newer selections that just came out in the last year is the uh, Lavella uh, Pink from Selecta. It was a little rangy early on, but it's really showing nicely here. Uh, nice gray foliage, dark purple flower with the lavender wing. Uh, so I think this one will, will definitely gain in popularity. It's got a great habit uh, and it's showing really well in this trial. Something a little different, a white and yellow flower. Uh, some people really like it, others not so much, but that's Lemon Lee, definitely a novelty um, for people that are really into something different in their lavender. Um, from a series perspective and uniformity within a series, the Little Bees are showing really well. Little Bees are bred by Florensis out of Holland. Um, they breed for very compact, uh, tightly branched habits. Uh, it's very typical of Dutch breeding. They're trying to maximize space in greenhouses and on racks. Uh, Little Bee Deep Rose is probably one of the better roses with the most color on it right now. Uh, and again, a, a really good series for four inch and gallon. <coughs> the Madrids were one of the first commercial series that were kind of touted as, as improvements over Autoquast and some of the older free varieties. Madrids are more of a medium vigor series, ideal for gallons, two gallons, still very good. Uh, disease, um, from a disease perspective, Madrid's performed for us in our climate. Uh, these are also bred in Australia and New South Wales where they deal with issues like heat and humidity in the summer that we don't have to deal with. So maybe something more appropriate for southern growers. Um, Marshwood is showing really well here. This is a free variety out of Europe, uh, unprotected. This showed well in our trial three years ago. It's showing well again here. It is a bigger variety and it will get away from you. Um, in a uh, small pot, so we recommend you know one gallon and up early on, and then late season it's great for you know patio containers or two gallons. Uh, Ninas uh, from Eris Horticulture; these are also bred in New South Wales. Uh, the Ninas are proving definitely to be one of the most compact series, especially the purple. If you have the desire to do you know a, a four inch or even a three inch lavender range, this is pretty much your option. Um, the rose is a little bigger, 
uh, but also still very compact. Uh, Euro American has two lavenders in the trial that we didn't have before. Uh, Ula Lavender, catchy name. Uh, two pinks, not sure why they need two pinks. They're both pretty similar. Uh, but a nice, you know, large B and a, and a medium wing. A uh, nice contrast, uh, well branched, so a solid pink lavender. Here's Autoquas. This is our solid kind of landscape tried and true performer. Still sold, uh, probably the most popular lavender in California, mainly just because it's so established. It's been out forever, it's unpatented. Um, and then you can compare it to a nook here, which is uh, in generally a better habit, better disease resistance but a little bit more expensive due to royalty and liner costs, things like that. So growers usually have to determine what has more value to them, lower cost input or better performance in the long run. Um, a few novelty colors, Pat Lee, this is bred in New Zealand, kind of different, it's got a chartreuse wing with a blue bee. Uh, definitely a larger variety, ideal for gallons and up, but that's something kind of fun. Uh, another novelty, this one out of the UK, this is Regal Splendor, has some of the darkest foliage um, available, um, almost a tie-dye effect on the wing, uh, but a very cool variety. People really seem to gravitate towards this one, uh, just from its unique flower color. The habit is good, uh, but if they could get this flower color and, and get it into the gene pool on some of these improved habits, I think they'd have something pretty special. If I were to pick one lavender out of the whole trial to kind of steal the show for flower power and, and from a consumer standpoint, I'd say it'd have to be blueberry ruffles. Blueberry ruffles showed really well in our trial three years ago. It's showing well here again. Uh, it can't tout the disease resistance that a nook can, but from a consumer perspective, that's pretty hard to beat. Uh, great branching, a lot of color, a very bright uh, wing, pink purple wing on a dark purple bee. Looks for a good contrast. The rest of the ruffles are all uh, shorter varieties and uh, in, in a range of pinks, every shade of pink you can imagine. You have a dark pink uh, with mulberry ruffles. You have a, a, a really light pink wing on sweetberry ruffles. Sweetberry, once it gets kind of going and it gets a little bit more size on it, it almost glows from a distance from how light of a wing it has. A really nice variety. And then a few more novelties. St. Tiara, which is another kind of chartreuse in blue, and Vanessa Lee, which is kind of a mauve, mauve purple color, and another a larger one from New Zealand. Any questions on lavender? Uh, from a culture perspective, these were grown outside in a Quonset with just a single layer of poly, mainly just to keep the rain off, so they had cool nights. Uh, they were planted approximately week 47. Uh, as the plants grew up and started to bud, I sheared the first set of buds off, uh, let them reflush, and once they had reflushed and we knew we were out of the rain for a little while, they moved outside for four weeks to harden off, and that seemed to work really well. If we were to leave them under the poly, uh, you have less disease issues, but it produces a much softer plant. So ideally, if we can, we, we like to finish them in full outdoor conditions. So that's lavenders. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.